Hi, this is Deidre Pike, your instructor for JMC 302, Mass Media and the Popular Arts. Welcome to my video blog or vlog for our course introduction. What we're watching is a scene from the animation WALL-E in which a lone robot lands on the Axiom spaceship. The Axiom is full of humans who have evolved into mushy blobs in front of screens riding around on hovercrafts. The human blobs don't need to think much. A voice from above tells them what to eat, what to drink, what color outfits to wear. The fictional world of this cartoon gives us an insight into the power of popular culture messages, and that's what this class is about. In the syllabus, which I'm sure you've already reviewed, I talk about Shakespeare plays, adult cartoons, South Park, and The Hunger Games. These media are all forms of cultural expression. Popular stories like these can reach huge numbers of people. And can they influence what an individual or group believes? Can popular media move us to act? Uh, certainly, that's the reason that advertising exists and uh, political propaganda like the media described in this news clip. Recruitment video, which looks professionally shot and edited, was produced by ISIS in English. It's tailor-made to appeal to Americans and other Western jihadists. It features a 20-year-old British medical student who's traveled to Syria to wage jihad. What prevents you from attaining martyrdom and the pleasure of your Lord? Look around you while you sit in comfort and ask yourself, is this how you want to die? To give you background on the conversation about pop culture, I've asked you to read What is Popular Culture, an essay by John Story. It's about 11 pages. It will give you good ideas of how to conduct a study of pop culture. Uh, to get you started on reading, I'll preview Story's three definitions of culture minus the popular bit. First, Story observes that culture is a process of intellectual, spiritual, and aesthetic development. When culture speaks, we listen and grow and change. Is some culture better than other culture? Can we divvy up culture into categories of high culture, like an orchestra performing symphonic music, and low culture, I don't know, like Megan Trainor being all about that bass? Uh, we'll talk more about this later. A second definition of culture involves a particular way of life, whether of people, group, or a period. Holidays, sports, religious festivals count as culture here. Here is the 2014 World Cup video with rapper Pitbull singing, We Are One. Thirdly, signifying practices. Story refers to structuralism and post-structuralism. Don't worry about that. It's not on the test. All this really means is culture is a way media makers signify or translate the human experience. This is a scene from the movie Smoke Signals. Why can't you have a normal conversation? You're always trying to sound like some damn medicine man or something. I mean, how many times have you seen dances with wolves? A hundred, two hundred? Oh, jeez. You have seen it that many times, haven't you? Don't you even know how to be a real Indian? I guess not. Oh, well, shit, no wonder. Jeez. I guess I'll have to teach you then, ain't it? First of all, quit grinning like an idiot. Indians ain't supposed to smile like that. Get stoic. No. Like this. Then Story talks about ideology, which he calls crucial in the study of pop culture. He gives five definitions. See if you can sum those up in your notes. Story concludes his discussion of ideology, noting the study of pop culture isn't merely about entertainment or what video games we play in our downtime. It's very much about relations of power and politics. Messages we consume influence our attitudes and ideas, our way of looking at the world, the product choices we make, our views of family, everything. If you control a culture storytelling, you don't have to worry about who makes the laws, writes George Gerbner. You're watching a scene from Leave it to Beaver in which the Beaver repents from lying to his father and gives away a bike he won during his period of dishonesty. I'm also very glad you realized you couldn't keep the bicycle. But there's still the matter of your being disobedient, isn't there? Yes, sir. Well, I think you'd better stay away from the movies for uh, two weeks. Yes, sir. The final and most important part of Story's essay attempts to figure out how the word popular fits with his ideas about culture. 
I'm going to ask you to write your first blog entry about this, connecting stories idea to your own pop culture knowledge and the now ancient internet meme Bad Luck Brian. Again, story offers a nice handful of definitions and notes a few problems with each. Perhaps popular culture is simply culture that lots of people like. Whoa, could it really be that simple? Hmm, that's not where stories labeling and defining ends, though. Read carefully and take some notes. Don't despair. This is one of the hardest things we'll read this semester, and I thought we should just get it out of the way. I hope you have some fun with your first WordPress post. If you're having problems, shoot me an email at deidrepike at humble.edu. If you're not having problems, shoot me an email anyway, just to say hi and introduce yourself. And again, welcome to class. This is a clip from the movie High Fidelity. I hope you like it. What came first? The music or the misery? People worry about kids playing with guns or watching violent videos. Some sort of culture of violence will take them over. Nobody worries about kids listening to thousands, literally thousands of songs about heartbreak, rejection, pain, misery, and loss. Did I listen to pop music because I was miserable? Or was I miserable because I listened to pop music?